Come on, 180 millimeter. That has the single-handedly the highest alpha of all the standard shells in the game, 1,600. <laughs> Rocket China Man from Rocket Chinatown. Everybody is kung fu fighting. Do 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 do. <laughs> All right, folks. The JPEGs for the BZ75 are finally leaked from the Super Test server. So let's take a look at this tier 10 normal Chinese heavy tank with a 180 millimeter. Yeah, the highest alpha of all the standard shells. Not the special premium, of course, compared to the 183, but that's that's one-shotting all tier 9 Waffen triggers practically. Or all tier 8s also, if you manage to pin. 75 millimeters of pin, which is not great, but for something like the Waffen Trigger Panzer IV or the Grill 15, it's dead practically. 225 for gold high explosive. Mm, only 1,000 alpha, but yeah, you take about 30 seconds to reload. That is quite a while. 3 seconds of aim time and 0.4 accuracy is not half bad for a high explosive derp gun for a heavy tank, but <clears throat> it's a close range fighting vehicle. 8 degrees of gun depression, make use of all the terrains, and 20 elevation, 30 rounds. High explosive and gold high explosive, but it also has a normal gun, not a meme gun, of a 152, so penetration 258, which is alright, standard average across the board. 650 alpha, which is a little bit below average, but 152s are usually 750 or so, so it's like the 705A a little bit, right? Which one has lower alpha, the 60 toilet paper or the 705A? One of the which, but... Gold shell is high explosive anti tank, 320, which is good. High explosive is 90, but eh, it's still better than <laughs> the 180mm high explosive pin. Has less alpha by half, but <laughs> reloads every 17 seconds, a little bit better aim time, still the same accuracy, same gun depression. Carries the same number of rounds. Holy crap. I mean, I would expect more if you're carrying 30 rounds of the 180. Alright. Crew members are commander, gunner, driver, and radio operator. What the hell? Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, it's a loader. There's no radio operator. You lie. <laughs> Come on, guys. Proofread. Double check your shits. Alright, fine. <laughs> it's a loader, it's not a radio operator. Top speed of 35, reverse of 15, boosting up to 53, which is not half bad for 200 millimeters of frontal hull armor. And this thing weighs about like what, 60 tons? So, pretty nasty. Horsepower per ton ratio is 13 baseline, up to 32 with boosting. So, not really that slow of a horsepower per ton ratio. Top speed could be better, but 35 is alright. Hall Traverse, 30. Not half bad, like a heavy medium tank. Church Traverse, 24. Heavy tank. Number of charges for the rockets are 6. Boost duration is 10 seconds. Takes 5 seconds to reload the charge. I mean, it's still a limited number of boost. 6 times, but... It's a lot better than 4 on the premium tier 8, right? The BZ 176. 2500 health, which is chunky, a little bit more chunky than the IS 7, or about the same as the IS 4, I believe. 200mm at the hull front, 110 at the hull sides, 60 at the rear, 330 for the turret front, looks like space armor too, might be, or not, no, it's not space armor, there's no ridge right here. It's just a chunk, it's a rounded, sloped chunk of thick ass armor, 330 at the front, and 165 at the turret sides and 70 at the rear, view range is average, 390, radio standard. Alright, this vehicle comes after the BZ-68, right here. All of these branch off from the Type 58, so make sure you buy one back from the Holiday Ops, practically. 
and into the BZ58, the 166, and the 68. So these are all rocket boosting Mimi of a gun. <laughs> they have two guns, so you could use the meme gun or you could use the normal gun. So up to you, but yeah, you'll you'll probably play these vehicles like the Type 5 or Type 4. And just forego the meme guns and just use the regular guns. But that's what happens when you nerf high explosive, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Stupid war game with the high explosive nerf. Alright, in game garage screenshots. Uh, Commander Cupola looks big. Uh, the ridge for a driver compartment, or not driver, <laughs> loader compartment, is right here. And it should be a cupola, but. That looks like a weak spot. Driver hatch in the front, all shaped like a wider WZ 111 esque of a design. So it's like the BZ 176. It's wider, more squarelier than the rectangular shape of the 5A, practically. Large armor structure for the turret sides. 330, so you're not penetrating the turret cheeks of this vehicle. Also, the mantlet looks fairly strong. So, practically aim for the commander cupola weak spot, but it might be a troll, so these might not be a weak spot at all. Which is. Uh, which is haul down monster with a high explosive round. Now, you could theoretically shot trap at the bottom of the turret cheeks into the hull roof. That could happen. And that's might be a possible way to override the uh, hull down lethality of this vehicle. Lower plate is somewhat huge. It's like the 5A or the 111s. So shoot the lower plate. It's a pike shaped hull. Don't angle it, obviously. Looks like there's space armor as well for the sides. So that's good. Elevated engine deck a little bit. So shoot at this ridge right here if it's side scraping. Or just shoot the the pike cheeks. All right, <clears throat> big caliber of a gun. This is the 152. So DPM is about 2,400 without a rammer, which is not half bad for a armored uh, super heavy tank. So it's it's classified as assault, right? The little pentagram or pentagon, but. It's like the IS-7s, practically. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. With a 100% crew, it's 0.38 accuracy and 2.6 seconds of aim time for a 152. Not half bad. Takes about 16 seconds to reload without the rammer. Also not half bad, but... Uh, you probably would want vents and rammer and likely vertical stabilizer because... The gun's probably inaccurate, but we have to find that out when the actual stats come out or the actual model comes to the common test. But yeah, it looks like the ridge on top of the turret is the main weak spot for the commander cupola and the driver lip thingy majig. There are rocket boosters. <laughs> yep, they have rocket boosters. Uh, a little bit longer of an engine deck, but. Compared to the 5A, it looks a little bit longer. Well, or taller also, but still. Yeah, okay. I mean, more squarelier, of course. More rhombus shape, but... Yeah, it's okay. It rocket boosts, and you can ram somebody with this thing. I mean, it doesn't have the top speed of the 5A or the horsepower per time ratio, but still, you have the rocket boost, so that cancels it out. And you can fire all the large caliber high explosive rounds out of this thing. <laughs> 30 rounds, shell velocity is not half bad for the 152. 1150. That's actually quite good for a large caliber of a gun. Not half bad. Gold high explosive and the tank is also not half bad in terms of shell velocity. And high explosive is still decent, so. Alright, workable gun. Not not too shabby. 152 right here. And the 180. <laughs> yes, it has 3200 DPM. If you manage to pin the two shells, you get to reload. <laughs> 75 millimeters of pin. Oh god. Terrible. 
I mean, you could use the gold high explosive, but that cuts the damage dramatically. You're down to 2100 DPM if you manage to pin. It's a 30 second reload without the rammer. Ugh. Wow, horsepower per turn ratio jumps to 2000 <laughs> when you're rocket boosting. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a meme, so yeah, assault heavy tank. We'll take a look at the modules or the field modifications, but nothing seems out of the ordinary across the board other than the big ass gun and the rocket boosters, but yeah. Yeah, that lip might be the main weak spot on top of the turret. So I'm worried about that. It's a normal tank, so there's no premium status, of course. And we'll talk about this later, but let's take a look. It's a salt heavy tank. Let's take a look at fuel modifications. Uh, at tier 10. So it's like, wow. It's like the IS-4. How much health? Oops, wrong tab. The same health as the IS-4, practically. So for fuel modifications, you will want this one first. So this one helps out with terrain resistance, practically. Uh, for accuracy or aim time, oof. With such a large caliber of gun, you already have garbage accuracy. You already have garbage aim time. So might as well have better aim time. The accuracy cut doesn't matter that much. It's already pretty accurate. So I would rather have better aim time a little bit. I mean, it depends, but nah, I'd rather have better aim time than garbage accuracy. So. Viewer rearrange buff, of course. Um, stun duration negate, or better hull traverse and top speed. Obviously, better top speed. You're rocket boosting, right? So don't worry about the high explosive damage and protection of crew from injuries. Nah, better top speed. Go ramming. Yeah, better top speed. And finally, repair speed and internal uh, module durability. So module health. Or better traverse. Um. Ooh, this one is. Uh, I mean, if you're rocket boosting, sometimes you get knocked off with your tracks when you hit somebody, right? Does it work like that? But I mean, it already has decent repair speed or decent um traverse speed than the actual repair speed. So if it's already decent enough of a traverse. Might as well use better, uh, better repair speed, right? Yeah, it has already decent traverse for the gun and for the hull. That's all right for a heavy tank. It's like a fat medium, or fat heavy, or yeah, light heavy. Confused. <laughs> yeah, gets better traverse, or gets better repair speed. I would say better repair speed. It already has decent enough traverse. And finally, for the the last uh, category or the second category of your equipment, go with the uh, firepower boost for your vertical stabilizer or rammer. But how much would I rate this thing? Jesus, I mean, the gun is a lot more workable, right? For the 152, the 180 is a meme gun. It's it's a meme. <laughs> You don't use this gun normally. No, it's like the Type 5. After the high explosive nerf, nobody used uh, the 150 on the Type 5. Even though that is somewhat tame by today's standards. Only a 150? That's nothing. Yeah, 150 or 140 for the Type 5. The high, explo yeah, high explosive nerf dramatically cuts the stock gun on the Type 5. So you might as well use the 140. Yeah, how much would I rate this thing if you're only using the 152? I mean, it's I mean, depends on the armor of this thing as well. What if we get a super trolley uh, turret roof? That might be super good. But you also have the shock trap. Oh, uh, I will say seven. Seven is not a half bad score, right? I mean, it's like the IS-4, but it has more lethality in terms of the rocket boosters. 
Whereas the IS-4 doesn't get rocket boosters. If the IS-4 gets a rocket booster, that's a whole different can of worms. <laughs> oh, imagine this thing having a rocket booster. That would be nice. I mean, it already has about the same DPM. Just smaller caliber of a gun as the 152. It's a 120, uh, 122, obviously, but it has about the same DPM. Well, better aim time. Less gun depression, though. Ugh. Also less turret traverse than gun traverse, right? Also about the same hull traverse. Oh, interesting. About 26. About the same turret traverse. Faster hull traverse. So this will feel like an IS-4. With rocket boosters. And a Mimi gun choice, but... Yeah, 7 out of 10. Depending on armor. So, we'll see once the common test hits and the actual tech tree is available. But they changed the 176, the BZ-176 again. So they nerfed the boosting top speed from 52 back down to 40. <laughs> so it was too good. <laughs> it was way too good. And nerfed the boosting accuracy more. Because you, you don't want to shoot while you're boosting, obviously. Shotgunning, well... Running at full speed is kind of scary, so, you know, yeah, okay. But they changed the ammo loadout of the high explosive gun, so... They added an AP round! <laughs> AP round is 230mm of pen. Shell velocity is also not half bad compared to the 300 originally for the high explosive, so... It's a more workable gun. This thing is already better than the Caliban. It's a lot better now with the AP shell. So you don't have to rely on the high explosive or the gold shell for that matter, but DPM sucks. It takes a while to reload. And it's a premium tank with rocket boosters, but yeah, that goes to show you how crappy the high explosive nerf is and the original shell velocity of this thing. Ugh. It still has the the nerf staff, uh the nerf stats for the gun, the original gun, but Fires all gold shell, <laughs> practically, with the gold high explosive, 160mm. Otherwise, you're not pinning with 75mm of pin. Well, yeah, you're not pinning. <laughs> the gun is kind of crap. The main thing about this gun is the shell velocity. I have to go back to this page to show you. Shell velocity for normal high explosive, 360. Oh my god. Mach 1, the, sound, uh, the speed of sound is 354 meters per second. You barely outmaneuver the sound barrier. <laughs> barely. So the person will hear the boom while being shot at. <laughs> That's how slow this thing is. I mean, gold shell is a little bit better in terms of shell velocity, but yeah, it needs the AP round. I mean, you still have the high explosive round. Dealing the 1100 Alpha. Also, it flies faster at 550 meters per second now than 360. But you get, you get to use AP round, which is a lot better. Also, it gets a heat round, which is not half bad in terms of penetration. So, compared to the gold high explosive, yeah, it's, it's more workable, right? It's a lot more workable. Well, 760 compared to 550 is a little bit better, but... Well, the penetration is better. 290. Yeah, 290 compared to 225. Yeah. High explosive anti tank is better than gold high explosive. So, I don't know. It, it's a buff for sure. So, it's still about 7.5 when it's top tier and about 6 ish when it's bottom tier. So, the gold shell helps out a lot. Maybe a 6.5 when I think about it. The gold shell and the high, ex uh, high explosive change into AP matters a lot for this vehicle. Make make the BZ-176 way more viable than something of the Caliban sort. God, I hate the Caliban. Every time I mention the BZ-176, I have to freaking <laughs> this on the Caliban. God, I hate this piece of crap. You suck! 
High explosive shell velocity is 354. That's the speed of sound. <laughs> it has an AP RAM, but god, this thing is bad. Also, the accuracy is bad, aim time is bad. Yeah, the BZ-176 is a lot more viable nowadays with the AP round and the high explosive and the tank than the Caliban. But this is like a 6.5, 7-ish now, so pretty good. And for the BZ-75... Ah, I would say 7. Depending on the armor, I would say 7. But still usable. I mean, it might be 7.5. Might be. You have to see it on the comment test. But there you go, folks. The BZ-75 with changes to the BZ-176. Here is the tech tree one last time. So we'll get to see all these vehicles. Likely after holiday ops. But unfortunately, you get not you do not use them for uh, Halloween. <laughs> Slurring up my words. You do not get to use them with the turbocharger or the rocket booster from Halloween event. That would be nice. You get twice the amount. A rocket boosting without ramming damage but that's unfortunate well thank you guys for watching this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys next time peace